we just returned from Boston along with a third member of our crew, Kevin Torres, who immediately diverted and headed for West Texas to cover the explosion there. Yep, you know when you, you get this job, you sometimes have to travel out of town to bring the stories, and that was our job in Boston, was to, to go to Boston and cover the Coloradoans that were running the race. There were over 500 Coloradoans running this race, so that's why we went to Boston. If you think about it, there are those 500 people in the race. Thousands more from Colorado have run that race over the years. Even just the 500 this year, they've got friends and family back home watching. So we're talking about thousands and thousands of people add them all together, and it's a decent-sized town or small city in Colorado that was impacted by what happened there in Boston. It is, and, and the people that we talked to in Co from Colorado out there, they wanted to tell us their stories so they could get their stories back to the people back home. You can text and you can call people, but they felt they could reach more people through us. The story that the Bliven family told us was so typical of a number of the race family stories in that they were separated at the moment of the blast and had to find their way together. So our challenge in telling their story was to not dramatize what was already a tough moment but simply to allow them to tell it accurately. And we ran into a number of families that had that same experience yep. of something horrible has happened. I don't know exactly what. How do we find each other? How do we get together again? We wanted to tell stories without showing the, the events that took place the blast. over and over again. We didn't want to continue to bring that up. We wanted to tell that, that story, and so that was a challenge. We had, to, we had to follow them around. They weren't able to go to their hotels. They were evacuated, but we followed them around the city a little bit um, to, to be able to tell their story in, in a different way. One of the most moving things that we saw was the day that we were at the barricade at the corner of St. James and Berkeley. We just stumbled upon it randomly. We saw a crowd of people. We walked up and we watched as people who were relatively composed walked to the barricade. They were given their runner's bag of stuff that they had left for themselves at the end of the marathon. And then as they reached to get their finishing medal, we saw the organizer say, no, I will put this on yep. you. And the, as the medal went on, people broke down. They, they did, and that, that really touched me. And that was the one story that we did that did not involve just Colorado people, that that was people of everywhere. We saw, there was a one gentleman that I believe was from Germany and he was so excited. And that, that story touched me the most because it was, it, it was a finishing. It was, they finished the race finally. It might've been 24 hours later, but they finished and they felt a sense of accomplishment as much as they could at that point. I'm so glad that we were able to go and tell stories of people who witnessed it, but were not so close that it directly impacted them physically. That was, yep. the, that was the, the real blessing, because we went to Boston not knowing was someone from Colorado killed or seriously injured. Yep. Um, and to the best of our knowledge at this point, still no serious injuries among the hundreds and hundreds of folks from Colorado who were there. So that we could walk away from and say, thank goodness.